2 Corinthians chapter 9, after chapter 8, talking about giving money. For as touching the ministering, okay, now we're about the ministry, to the saints. So, I'm not going to say the chapter and verse markings are not proper in your Bible. They're a great help. But, let's take chapter 8, verse 24. Wherefore show ye to them, and before the churches, the proof of your love, and of our boasting on your behalf. For as touching the ministering to the saints, and remember we talked about that. The offerings were given to help the saints, to help the ministry. It is superfluous for me to write unto you. I, I got to write this. It's needful. It's important. For I know your forwardness of your mind. And that's ahead of time. For which I boast of you to them of Macedonia. And Achaia was ready a year ago. And your zeal has provoked many. Paul is telling the people of Macedonia, those Corinthians, they've got a store of abundance of what God's given them, a collection, ready to go. Ready to be given when we send these men to them. And they're saying, because of what you guys are doing in Corinth, Achaia is now, they're giving money. So Paul is boasting. On the work of the ministry of what the Corinthians doing. And that boasting, not proudly. He's just saying, listen, this is what those those people in that church are doing. That has caused other churches to say, well, let's do it too. Now we got to think backwards today because we've got churches that are provoked to do wrong. Rather than right. One church is going to have a vacation Bible. Now all the churches are going to have it. And you've got to compete with everybody to get the most kids at your vacation Bible. What happened to the gospel? Why not get the unity of the Christian churches that believe Jesus Christ is the blood and gospel of our salvation together and say, let's just have one vacation Bible, just preach the Bible, a whole complete tent meeting just for the kids and for the gospel, but there'll be no time for playtime. There'll be no time for recreation. And But here is a good thing. The Corinth church has, has given other churches hope. Given hope. So not only can you give money, not only can you give yourself, not only can you give your resources, but you can give hope to someone else. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. I'm sending brethren, I'm coming to get the money. That's what he's saying. He's, saving Christ, he's sending Christian people to Corinth to, we're still on the money. That offering they took to help the saints, okay? I'm going to send men. But meanwhile, I've been telling them all about you. And to make sure you're ready. When they get there, don't. At least happy if they have messed away, come, on, come with me and find you unprepared. Well, what oh, what are the money? Oh, we, no, we spent money. Oh, we don't have it. I'm like, oh, hurry up and get the plate. He's saying, listen, I'm sending people to you. There's been a collection. I know there's been. Certain people in Macedonia might come with me. Don't be caught off guard. Be ready. That we say not ye should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. And it's be honorable to what your word is. You said there was there's something there. Let the something be there. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before you and make up beforehand your bounty, the offering, whereof ye had noticed before, we told you what we had, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not of covetousness. It's an offering. It's an offering for the saints. 
It's not, ooh, let me have it. I gotta have that money you guys are getting. No, this money is dedicated to the saints and to the ministry. It's not for us. It's not for these guys I'm sending. They're not covenanting these money, this money. They're just collecting the money. But this I say. Now we're going to go and talk about giving. We've been talking about giving. He said, listen, you guys have a pot of money? Be ready. I'm sending people for it. But I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Same subject with, with offering and giving. If you very limited of your giving. And I'm not just mentioning money. I'm talking about yourself. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about your resources. What you have. You, you do it very little as you can do. Then you're going to get the very little from God. Plain and simple. God is not going to give. Uh, I've never watched the TV ministries. I, I've heard the illustration. You know, give me ten dollars and God will give you ten thousand. I don't know if they say that, but that, that's not what's going to happen. You're not going to give God a little bit, and then He's going to give you a whole bunch back. And if you're giving sparingly, you, you know you're counting. These are the people that, that will 10% to the fullest of that paycheck. And then they'll have the nerve to, to, to question, do I give net pay or gross pay? Those are those people. I want to know the very minimum I can give God. One hour church service, one Sunday morning, okay, one Sunday morning only. So I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give you two nights. I'm not going to give you three nights. I'm not, maybe I'll leave a gospel track out somewhere, but that's it. And those people will get very sparingly rewarded. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And we're going to see here verses 6 to the end of this chapter. We're seeing Paul telling us how to give, and there is no mention of tithes. Because a lot of times being under grace, oh, i got to give 10%. And we're going to see God does not want that. Now, I told you, I do give a minimum of 10% just to be safe, but I give above. I'm not going to say 10% is proper or not proper. I've heard both ways of preaching. So I figured 10% and I don't give it grudgingly. I'm happy to give it to the Lord. It's the first part that I give to the Lord, the first check. And then whatever more I give to that. But Paul is saying, listen, God has given you abundance, chapter 8. Out of that abundance that God's given you, you can do it sparingly or you can do it bountifully. There's no 10% mentioned. And watch as we read further. Every man... According as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Now God has purposed in my heart at least 10%. Not by law, not by order, but I feel that is a safe percentage. And more. But if I ever fell upon bills and stuff like that, or trouble, my minimum would be from my heart 10% at least. If the Lord lays on your heart, you know, a missionary comes in and there's a, there's special offerings for missionary. God lays in your heart that money that's in your pocket, whatever, a check that you can write. If that comes from your heart, your purpose in your heart for that missionary, for that ministry, that thing, that Christian, by all means, do it. You hear a story in church, this family, this person is having such much trouble and God lays in your heart and says, why don't you give him $50? Yeah, I will. That's purpose in your heart. So let him give. Not grudgingly. Uh, I'm blasting the pain again. Yeah, I'm going to give that family the help and the money. You know, I wonder what they're going to do with it. I don't know. 
Well, always money, money, money. I, anyway, I gotta live too, and I won't be able to get coffee this week. All right, no, I won't be able to, I don't know. That's grudging. That's telling God, here's the money, but you know what? I'm griping and complaining about it. That's not what God wants. Even if there's a 10%, I'm going to give 10%. Uh, is it gross or not? God doesn't want it. But say, Lord, of all what you've given me, I ought to give back to you. You've given me life, so I should give you some of my life. You've given me a vehicle. I should be able to use my vehicle for you. You've given me a mouth. I should use my mouth for you. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the least I can do for you. For all what you've done for me. And you do it not grudgingly. Don't complain about it. Or necessary. necessary. Now what's that one? You're forced to do it. And I've seen videos of this one. Uh, they have the hundred dollar dance, and they'll, they'll, what they'll do is everybody will get up. They'll have the one dollar line. Everybody gets up and they they walk around somehow and they, and they all put a dollar in the play. And you're looking around and like you're not the only one that got up. Oh, well, he not giving no money. And the five dollar, ten dollar, twenty dollar, hundred dollar, and you know, and then somebody will look over like, hey, he didn't. You'll be like, I gotta give something just because everybody else is giving something. You might be sitting in a pew, a row of pews, and a plate comes around, and you put something in there only because you don't want everybody to see in that pew that you didn't put nothing in it. Or there's a gimmick of the church. I don't know what gimmick would be, but you have to give it. God doesn't want that. For God loveth, you want God's love? The love of God? People say, you don't preach the love of God. The love of God is a cheerful giver. How's that? Yes, we're talking more about money. We're talking about ourselves. When you give your time, your effort, your money, you, yourself, all that you can do for God, God loves that. How's that? What is God's love? God's love is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. That same love that he shed and gave his son to die for our sins. That love is if you do it cheerfully. And Satan will work on you. you you'll give money to help somebody. You'll give, and there'll be times that Satan will let you know. And, you know, you get that little thought there. Just put that under the blood. Because when you gave it, you gave it a cheerful rightness of God that's credited. Satan can work on it, and we'll work on you afterwards, but that's not how you gave it. Well, I've had Satan mess with me many times about money I've given. But when I gave it, I gave it for the Lord. I gave it because I because the Lord gave me. And God loveth those that give him cheerfully. I am happy to, to be used by God. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now, there's where the there's where the t television. Be. See, if you give money, God will get. It doesn't say He's going to give you money back. He says grace. Grace may may not be a, a check in the mailbox or a brand new car in the driveway. Go and look up the word grace, and you will find in every dictionary. I guarantee you will not find money. And ye are always having all sufficiency in all things. You'll have enough. You won't get extra. Sufficiency means, hey, just enough. I can survive on that. And God's grace is, he may give me a little extra. May abound to every good work. Giving is a good work. How's that? That's what God says, and he loves it. As is written. Oh, so Paul's not going to quote scripture. He has dispersed the board. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Psalms 112, 9. That's giving. 
giving is a Bible doctrine even in the church age. What did God do to you? He gave his only begotten son. Now he that ministers seed. What was Mark chapter 4? The sower went out with what? Seed. Now he that ministers seed to the sower. Mark chapter 4. Both ministers bread for your food. And multiply your seed sown. And increase the fruits of of your righteousness maybe you're not able to go and preach maybe you're not able to take part of a ministry maybe you're not able to go to Spain or China or anywhere but if you help those people with the seed of the gospel according to Mark chapter 4 you will be blessed and helped and righteousness fruits now I support missionaries. You don't know. You don't need to know how many I support. But when I give them money, and I give them money, when they get fruit from that ministry, I get fruit from that ministry. Now, if by chance, like I said, we have a street ministry on Saturday morning. If my wife is sick, and we say she says, "Go on the streets. Go without me. I'll be okay. Pray for me. Just go." And if I go on the streets. And she's home sick. And somebody gets saved. Somebody gets right. God applies to her as my wife, as a fellow laborer, my help me. She gets the credit for the seeds and the fruits that were planted. Now, if my wife, like she does at Walmart, passes out gospel tracts to everybody she can. At the, at the hospital, she's passing out gospel tracts anywhere and anyone she can. Now, her passing out those gospel tracts, if somebody gets a result of salvation or growing, I get part of that ministry because we're husband and wife, we're one. You see what giving does? Giving is then God giving back to you more than what you want or can imagine. Again, let's take corn, a little pop, a little corn on a cob. You put one of those seeds in the ground, and how much corn do you get later? More than bountiful. A tomato seed, you put it in the ground. Look how many tomatoes you get. And the TV and radio preachers will say, "Well, see, you see this right here? That's right now. No, that's not right now. That just you may not get those fruit unto glory at the judgment seat of Christ." I don't know how many people from the time I got saved to today, I don't know how many people ever got saved. I know there are some. I know I got some fruits, but I don't know how many. But the missionary work, support in a church that is evangelistic, praying for people who are out in the field, praying for people who are studying for the ministry, exalting the people. That all goes, we all work together in that young that that yoke called giving. Now who does not take part in that yoke? Someone who doesn't give. Someone doesn't do nothing at all. Even someone who gives sparingly will get something. Now you take you take an apple tree, all right? There's three people. The apple tree. The guy goes up to one apple tree. He takes all the apples down, and he brings them home to his wife, and she makes apple pie, apple tarts, and they have apples eaten. Whatever she can do with those apples, apple cider, apple this, apple that, apple everything, he brought home bountifully, and he's going to get a bountiful response with those apples. Now you get a guy. He goes up to an apple tree, and he grabs ten of them. And he brings them home, and his wife can't do as much as the one that grabbed all the apples, but she can make pies, she can make tarts, she can, there's something there, but it's not as much as the guy that brought home all. Then you got another guy with an apple tree, and he doesn't do anything. He ain't getting no apples. 
He's getting no pies, no tarts, no nothing. That's a rule of harvesting. Paul is showing us something through harvesting of what we give to God, what we do. You can if you, if you like cucumbers, and you go out to your garden, and you're out there, you're looking for cucumbers. You're saying, "Where are the cucumbers? Where are they?" You didn't plant them. Well, don't expect cucumbers. You got to do something to expect something from God to bless. And that blessing may not be here on planet Earth. You're not giving that promise. Your fruits may be in crowns, gold, silver, or precious stone. You may get something here. But I'm going to give you a little testimony of God. I'm going to be very careful with this. I'm not going to tell you what my giving is, but you know what? God has me been sufficient. And I can't explain how he can be sufficient. I'm amazed when I open up my refrigerator door what God has blessed us. Being enriched. And everything to all bountiful, bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. You know why God gives you blessing? You know what God gives you? Because he wants you to thank him. And you think because you got Trump in office, you think because, you know, we give one day of thanksgiving, you think God's going to bless this country? You know how much this country wastes food? We waste everything that God has given us, our resources. And there's no thanking of God. You only open up that refrigerator. I don't care if you just got a, a, a ham sandwich in there. You better thank God that, for that ham sandwich rather than just an empty refrigerator. And then thank God that the refrigerator is still running and keeping it cold. You only thank God when you knock down five, five houses one day. Nothing. You better thank God that you got legs to walk and you don't know what's going to happen. Remember, you might be just a planter. And there may be need of water to come along. Remember what Paul said about that in 1 Corinthians? Notice how Paul keeps using planting, guarding, husbandry. That brings you back to Adam, doesn't it? God expects you to be thanks, thankful. While by the ex experiment of this ministration, say giving is a ministry. Well, I don't think women should be in the in the in the pastor. Yeah, that's true. The Bible says no, no women are supposed to preach. But you, didn't the Bible wait? Didn't the Bible use that the women used to minister to Jesus? Were they preaching? No. They bring Jesus food. They bring, you know, he get a, a, a hole in his, his cloak. They sew it for him. They, they would provide. And that's what we're supposed to do. Ministration, they glorify God for, for your professed sub, yeah, subjection unto the gospel of Christ. So there's a means we're saved. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. And for your liberal, ooh, there's a bad word in America today. This distribution, yeah, I can't say it. Distribu uh, distribution. Distribution. All right, I used to work in the distribution. Yeah. <laughs> you said I have to hate to answer the phone on that one. You know what God told you, Christian, what you're supposed to do? And you're going to hate this one. I'm going to need to call 911 for this one. God called you to be a liberal when giving. I'm going to tell you, 2017 is hard. My wife and I are having a discussion today, and you know you drive by the Walmart, and 
God, do they really need help? I, I'm, I'm not saying God is. I'm saying God, does that person really need help? And then you come out of Walmart and there's a cops with his lights going and they're having a little conversation with him. The same one is there every single time you go to Walmart. It's hard to tell today who. But I'll tell you what, what you can do. Liberal dis. There we go. That word again. You got somebody in the church. You got a family suffering. Help them. I got a card today from somebody in in our church, a church family, that we see on, on Sundays. They haven't seen us because I've been in the hospital, and that card just lifted my joy up. Amen. They're praying for me. The whole family signed the card, and not only with the words of the card, but they added more words to it. That's encouraging. Meanwhile, there are other people in the church that have nothing to do with us. That hurts. You people don't realize it. Clicks hurt. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names do hurt. Liberal, that word, unto them. And unto all men, not just saved. And I'm saying again, I'll, I don't know how many times I'll say it. If somebody comes up to you and says, can I have some money? You've got to try the war. God doesn't expect you to be a fool. I wouldn't hand out money to every homeless person that came up to me. And, <laughs> and they you come up to us because of our car. Yeah. All of them and just because I'm in the ministry preaching the word and have a Bible we had one guy on the street our cars loaded bumper stickers he told us outright and this is not the exact words but because you're a Christian you're supposed to give me money even no though, even though we didn't have any ourselves no I'm not supposed to and he would run to this verse say liberal that word you can't say to all men yeah but God wants me to be wise doesn't he So you got to be wise. You got to try the waters. And there is a if the, if you got the ability. Now listen, if I if somebody comes up to me and say, "Sir, can I have something for for a meal, or some money for a meal?" And they really say, "Listen, I'll take you. I'll say this convenience store." Now don't go in the convenience store with your credit card that you ain't got no money in the bank or anything. You say, "Here, buy whatever you want." And I'll just hold the bank. Now that's stupid because that's not of your abundance. Now, if you got the money and you can do it, and it's for he, he really needs something to eat, okay, help him. But if you don't have the money, it's, I'm gonna say sorry, sir. I be honest, I don't have the money. Now, I say something when I'm dealing with him, and I when I'm on the street ministry, I don't carry no money on me at all, so I don't lie to him. I say, hey, I don't carry money with me. And it's not a lie. We've had people, my wife's giving, no, other people's giving fruit. They threw the fruit down the ground. If we saw a woman one time, the $5 bill hit the ground. She was cussing while trying to pick it up. You got to be careful. And even in the church, you got to make sure that they're not going to blow that money foolishly. But we're supposed to give it liberal. And people make fun of liberal. The government's gone too far. They'll give the money to anybody and everybody. But we're supposed to use common sense. And by their prayer for you. This would be the Macedonians. Or the Acadia. Which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. You guys have set such an example. There are people who are praying for you because you're doing something for God. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. What's this unspeakable gift? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This unspeakable gift is the ability to give and to give to others. So how's that? So imagine 
a time called Jesus' birthday. And we all go buy gifts. And we beat each other up on Black Friday. And how many of those gifts that, oh, I've got to buy something for them because they're going to buy me something. And have no profit at all for nothing that when those people die that get that gift, it's not going with them. But God's unspeakable gift that he's given to our hearts. We are studying 2 Corinthians today. This is Paul's book. This is Paul writing. These videos are our family Bible study, and we put them out for whoever can hear them on the Internet. You tape them. You do whatever you want with them legally. And you realize, let's say this video goes out in some country somewhere. Someone hears this message. They say, you know what? I'm going to start giving to my church. I'm going to start going to give my time. You know who gets the credit? No, not just me. Paul does. And how long has Paul been dead? And yet, something he has said, something he has written, something that he has left, the legacy of, of this scripture, is still accounted to him. And giving. As I said, my wife gives out gospel tracts. I give out gospel tracts. We could die tonight, and a gospel tract she left somewhere if the Lord tarries, let's say 20 or 30 years later, somebody picks it up and gets reads and gets saved. That's still accounted. I may die tonight, and 10 years from today, my father, he somehow trusts Christ as his Savior. I still get the credit, even though being dead. That's a great gift that goes even when I'm dead. Giving by God and how God says to give goes beyond the grave. Because one day, the missionaries I support, I'm going to see those people who had a part of those ministries in the countries where they're at and sweet fellowship with those, those, ministry, those missionaries before Jesus Christ long after death, long after the rapture, and when we're all in eternity, when all sin is gone, when all those who rejected Christ are cast off in the lake of fire, when there's a new heavens, a new earth, a new Jerusalem, there will we be our gift to God, all before God, bowing our heads down before Jesus Christ, the gift of God, which gave eternal life. How's that? We will be presenting the gift of God for our eternal life, all the gifts that we did, and there's going to be many Christians who will have no gift to offer to God at all. And it's the story of the guy with the talents. One guy had 10 talents. He went in there. He made 10 other talents. And another guy had 10 talents. And he had like a, a half of them. But he still made something. And then there was one guy. He took his talents and him in the dirt and did nothing. And then they'll cry, baby, oh, give, 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 give. You better give. If you want a reward from Jesus Christ, you better give. The Bible says give. Give cheerfully. Give rejoicefully. Give. What's it say? It says be a cheerful giver. Don't make yourself do it. Don't make anybody do it. And don't do it grudgingly. And God will love you. And you have a gift. How's that? Not every gift you get today. You may have to wait to your birthday. You may have to wait to Christmas before you get. You may have to wait to the rapture and judgment seat of Christ to get that gift. But giving is a Bible doctor. So let us give of ourselves. Anything and everything that God asks. <clears throat> I mean, if your child came to you and say, Mom, can I get a bike? I mean, would you try to get him a bike? Or if your son would ask for, for a bread, would you give him a serpent? Your father in heaven might ask you for something. 